For strongly coloured samples such as red wine, first of all add approximately 5 ml of the wine to a pre-calibrated polypropylene tube. And then add either 0.2 grams of PVPP powder or a tablet from Megazyme that contains 0.2 grams of PVPP. Cap the tubes. Then mix them by vigorous shaking until the tablet completely disperses. If available, use a vortex mixer. This will greatly assist this mixing process. When the tablet's completely dispersed, leave the tubes sit at bench temperature for approximately about five minutes. At this point, the contents of the tubes are filtered through Wattman number no. one filter paper. This filtration will take approximately five minutes. It's not essential to obtain all the sample, um, but to collect about one or two mils would be preferable. In comparing the original wine sample and the samples treated with the PVPP in either tablet or powder form, you can see that most of the colour, but not all of the colour, is removed. Accurately weigh approximately 10 grams of milk into a 100 ml volumetric flask. Remove the filter funnel and record the exact weight. Then adjust the volume to approximately 60 ml with distilled water. At this point, add 2 ml of Carez 1 solution to the volumetric flask and mix the contents thoroughly by vigorous rotation. Then add 2 ml of Carez 2 solution and again mix the contents thoroughly. Finally, Add 4 ml of sodium hydroxide solution at 100 millimolar. Mix the contents thoroughly. Then make the contents of the volumetric flask up to volume using distilled water from a wash bottle. Filter the solution through Wattman number one filter paper. And use the filtrate, which may still be very slightly hazy in the assay. Protein containing samples such as milk, yogurt, cream, serum or blood samples or homogenized meat samples can be deprotonized with perchloric acid as shown in the following example for milk. First of all add 2 ml of the sample to a test tube and then add 2 ml of ice cold perchloric acid. Mix the contents of the tube vigorously on a vortex mixer over about 10 or 15 seconds. And then centrifuge the contents of this tube at 1500 G for 10 minutes. The sample tubes are removed from the centrifuge 
and the clear supernatant solution is used in the next step of the sample preparation. With some samples, after treatment with perchloric acid and centrific centrifugation, a small amount of the denatured protein floats on top of the clear supernatant solution. Care should be shown in removing this solution to try to avoid or to reduce the amount of this precipitate that's collected. Transfer one mil of the perchloric acid and centrifuged sample solution into the bottom of a clean glass test tube. To this add 0.5 mil of one mole of potassium hydroxide solution. Mix the contents thoroughly on a vortex mixer. And then add 0.5 mil of one molar buffer solution as used in the particular assay. Mix the tube contents thoroughly. This solution, which contains insoluble potassium perchlorate, is centrifuged to 1500 G to give a clear supernatant, which is used in the subsequent assay. The measurement of low levels of oligosaccharides in samples containing very high levels of monosaccharides can be very difficult. For example, measurement of lactose in beta-galactosidase treated milk samples or measurement of sucrose in samples that contain high levels of fructose and glucose. This analysis can be achieved by first treating the sample with sodium borohydride to convert the sugars to sugar alcohols. Sucrose will not be modified by this at all Lactose be converted to lactitol, but this is still hydrolyzed by beta-galactosidase that's used in the lactose kit. In this example, we'll be looking at the measurement of residual lactose in beta-galactosidase treated milk samples. Accurately transfer 1 mL of beta-galactosidase pre-treated milk sample to 4 mL of water in an 18 by 150 millimeter glass test tube. Mix the contents of the tube thoroughly and then add one mil of sodium borohydride solution, which is sodium borohydride at 10 milligrams per mil in 50 millimolar sodium hydroxide. Stir the tube vigorously and seal with parafilm. Then incubate this tube at 40 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes. During the incubation period, borohydride reduces sugars to sugar alcohols. The tubes are removed from the water bath and parafilm covering is taken off. Then add two and a half mils of 200 millimolar acetic acid carefully to destroy all remaining borohydride. You see during this step that the tube contents will foam. This reaction occurs almost instantly. This solution is then filtered through Watman number no. one filter paper and the clear solution or slightly turbid solution is used directly in the assay.